gonna deal with the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 11. My God, we're gonna try to draw some principles from the story. I was listening to T.D. Jakes a couple uh, day or so ago. I think it was Sunday. Sunday it was. And, and he said, you know, he'd been passing over 40 plus years, Mama Donna, and he know that the church that he has been called to pastor is very familiar with Bible stories in the Bible because a lot of people in the church should be reading. So, so, they, so they should be very aware of the Bible stories. Especially like what we're about to talk about tonight, my God, in 2 Samuel chapter 11, starting in verse number 1, down through 5. It's a story, but it's a familiar story. But I'm going to attempt to pull some principles. T.D. Jake's talking about he's looking for the principles in the story. A lot of, we, we, he, he was talking about how he's not trying to convey and make the people aware and knowledgeable pass around of the story. He's seeking for the principles, the pool, huh? from the stories because people know the story my god but it's just the principles that move you it's the principles that change it's the principles that go with you my god and so i'm going to attempt to give you some principles from this story my god and it reads in second samuel chapter 11 starting at verse number one it says in the spring leading from the new living in the spring of the year when kings normally go out to war David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Verse 2 says, late one afternoon, after his midday rest, David got up out of bed. And was walking on the roof of his palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was. Are y'all with me so far? And he was told she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, and the wife of Uriah, Uriah, Uriah the Hittite. Verse 4 said, Then David sent messengers to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had just completed the purification, rich rites, however you want to say it, rich and rites, after having her ministerial period. Then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, she sent David a message saying, I am pregnant. Father God, teach these principles. Open up our hearts. Illuminate our minds, Father God, to receive your word on tonight. Father God, it don't take you long, Father God, to help us. And it don't take you long to fix us. Father God, is anything too hard for you according to the word? So whatever my sons and daughters as well as the guests are facing on tonight, Father God, I'm praying, Father God, uh, that we search ourselves, Father God, and if we find ourselves drifting towards one of these principles, Father God, that you warn us. Because your word says that you get warning before destruction, Father God. So those, Father God, of God, hear the things of God. So help us to see and hear the warning signs that's going off in our spirit and off in our minds, Father God. Oh, don't let us, Father God, harden our heart towards your voice, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Father God, speak by your spirit, Father God. Remove my flesh out your way, Father God, so that you can pull the principles from this story, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The title of this sermon is Winning in Public and Losing in Private. Let's say that one more time. Winning in Public and losing in private. So I called my wife, first lady, and I told her the title, and she said, mm, that's good. So even though y'all didn't give me that, oh, I got it already, Sister Jackie, when I got the phone call and the clearance for my dime. Come on, somebody. So I'm gonna say it one more time, because I want y'all to get this in your psyche. Winning in public and losing in private. So, I have been, uh, I have always made a statement how we do not want to be public successes and private 
failures. Are you with me so far? So as a redeemed church attending a person, a tither, a paying faithful believer, it is possible that your closest friends and family have not heard all your testimony. Do I got a witness? Amen. Let me say that again. As a redeemed church attending tither, paying faithful believer, it is possible that your closest friends and family have not heard all of your testimony. As we pick and choose the parts we want people to know and avoid what we are trying to forget. Yeah. At the peak of David's kingly career, he became, watch the, write these down, this is the introduction, at the peak of his career, at the highest height, he became complacent, Overly confident and too comfortable. Watch this. As his man, as his manly instinct to conquer was shifted, I turned from conquering enemies, enemies, now it's shifted to conquering women. David is known, my God, as 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 as, as a lamb. He wrote a lot of the Psalms. My God, David knew how to be a lion and David knew when to be a lamb. My God, if you read the one year Bible, my God, uh, 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 we got some good stories going on, my God, with David. My God, I'm learning stuff that I did not see years ago or even last year about King David, my God. But I see that David was a warrior and he was a major warrior and David never lost any external, stay with me, David lost, my God, never lost any external battles. Boy, Y'all don't want to miss this Sunday, I promise you. That statement I just made was really a part of my Sunday thought. He won all of his external battles. But how many know it's not always the external battles that get us? So please make sure that you invite everybody that you know and tell them you don't want to miss one o'clock service at going hall for Christ church. My God. And so let's look at the progression. Ooh. Let's look at the progression. Let's look at the progression. Because remember, as we had our 144 meeting, I want to thank every last one of you. My God, I just keep finding myself looking at the picture that Janice and Kendall took and just seeing the amount of people. Ooh, I know some of the people are left and all of them couldn't be here. But to know that out of, out of all the people that was here, only about three or four of them, I think it was four of them that wasn't actually in a 12, but they are acquiring about the 12. And so I want to say thank you for being submitted to the vision that God has called me and my wife to. Come on, give yourself a hand. Amen. Thank you. So let's look at this. There is a progression that happens with a private fall, y'all. There are five significant points to be made with David that reveal the progression of a private moral failure. So let's look at this. So point number one, let's put that on the screen. David was in the wrong place. See, we got to be careful. And we got to quit. We, when I say we, I know I'm just speaking in general. We got to make sure that we not only, that we don't just quote, God order my steps. We got to really submit to letting God order our steps. Are y'all with me so far? We quick to say, oh my God, God order my steps. But are we really letting God order our steps? And so David made a critical mistake because he was too complacent. He got too comfortable, my God. Oh my God, in his office. Keep in mind, my God, I can understand. I'm going to be sensitive to David because David never lost a battle. Come on, he killed the giant, my God, and he went from being high, my God, on a mountain and love, my God, to on the run for his life the next day. Come on, somebody. That's, if you're reading the story, you know he killed Goliath and then Saul tried to kill him once he put him in his army. So he went from being on a mountain on the run for his life. And he was a king on the run. So you could be high. He killed the Goliath. High on the mountain. Everybody, hey, David, hey, hey, David. And soon after that, my God, now he's on the run in caves, ducking and dodging, spears and people trying to kill him. My God, How, what did I do? All I did is do what you told me to do. Serving God, you would always have some questions. We don't always understand all the dispensations and all the things that God allowed to happen. But how can you kill a giant and then all of a sudden you're on the run for your life? <laughs> David was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Be careful. As I told you, at the 144, it's summertime. We tend to get just right here. I'm still in the river that I was in on Monday. We get complacent. We think, okay, we didn't kill a few giants. We didn't overcame a few things. We ain't struggling like we was this time last year, however you want to say it, my God. But yet we find ourselves getting complacent. 
We find ourselves feeling like, okay, I'm good. I can go back to those places that God snatched me out of. Be yeah. careful. Yeah. I, I can find myself, my God, reconnecting uh, with people that I know is unhealthy and contaminating my soul. Come on now. But I think that I'm in a place that I'm really not. Yeah. And the Bible says that David should have been off to war. But because he got full of himself, he stayed back. The text indicate that it was a time of war when kings were at battle. But David, the Israelite king, sent his men to fight for him. Write that down. He sent his men to fight for him. See, this is a principle. He wasn't fighting with them. He sent them to fight for him, but he wasn't fighting with them. What happened? If you know the story, my God, about King David on all of his exploits, my God, his people passed around was used to David, the king, fighting side by side mm -hmm. with them. All of a sudden now, he shift on them. Instead of him being right there to give instruction, my God, to help them conquer these enemies, my God, he decided, you know what, I, my God, y'all go ahead, I'll stay back. Yeah. But he didn't know that, my God, when he sunk them, my God, doom was lurking. As I told y'all, the enemies ducked yeah, yeah. and he squatted, my God, looking for an opportune opportunity, my God, to strike. So David said, y'all go ahead, I'll stay back. He made a critical mistake not to be off to war with his men. He was in his palace. Instead of being on the battlefield. Yet he was, my God, yet he was in the wrong place when he should have been out to war. Ask yourself, am I in the wrong place in any area of my life? Some of you may say because, oh my God, with, with the, 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 the surgery, <laughs> oh my God, because you in surgery if you're going over Christ church and you're involved in the vision. It's, it, he, God is cutting on you, my God. It's a little painful. Do I got a witness out there? My God. And so some of you might say, yeah, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong church because I don't like all this going on in my life. I've been told, my God, my God, that my life was pretty much okay until I came to your church and now all hell didn't broke out. I said, you know why? Oh, because the enemy ain't worried about you when you ain't making a difference. Come on, come on. When you're doing church, my God, he's not scared of you. When you're doing church, my God, when you're not discovering your purpose, you're not trying to maximize your potential, you're not making a difference in nobody's life, my God, you live in one way and your kids have been affected because you live in one way. He ain't worried about you because he got you, the family, and everything connected to you. Yeah. But when you come to your senses yeah. Yeah. and decide to break camp in advance, my God, now you become a threat to him. Instead of him being a threat to you, shift. Oh, my God. And so you got to make sure, my God, that you're in the right place instead of the wrong place. Amen. Make sure you don't allow your flesh to take you somewhere that you know your spirit ain't ready to go. Ooh. Make sure that you don't allow your flesh to take you somewhere that your spirit ain't ready to go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That means don't start entertaining the lust of the flesh. You've been clean and sober, my God, but now you awaken that giant. Mm. That has happened, to, and that has happened, thank you, Holy Ghost. And the giant was, was dying, but the person made a decision to awaken him, and now they snatched him. Remember, I taught y'all, he's a snake in Genesis, but he's a dragon in Revelations. Yeah. That means he's been eating. What is it he been eating? He's been eating on our flesh. He's been eating on our pride. He's been eating on our disobedience. He's been eating on our slowfulness. He's been eating on our laziness. He's been eating on our unforgiveness. The enemy is eating, and the more he eats, the stronger he gets. Yeah. Don't feed your flesh. That's good. My wife corrected me today. I was in prayer, and I began to just pray for my wife and say, thank you, Lord. For my wife, she instead of saying protect, she said, I gotta tech you. Y'all didn't, y'all, yeah, you know how you say protect. She said, baby, I gotta tech you. And so I was telling the man of God, because you y'all stay in and fast on Sun on Wednesdays. And I fasted most of the day, but I decided to go up to this restaurant here that I'm getting turned out on. Come on, somebody, and get me something to eat. You know what I mean? And so the first lady said, Okay now, okay now. You're getting out of, let me put my words on, you're getting out of rhythm. Yeah. 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 No offense to bear. She said, don't let nobody take you out of your rhythm. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's for real. See, yeah. when, yeah. as I taught y'all men, when you, when you, that's called covering. Yeah. 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 
And the man of God said, you know what, tell first lady, she ain't never got to worry about me calling you on a Wednesday. Ain't that what you told me to be? You know what I'm saying? I would not get in the way of that right there. Because he understands it's vital that I spend that time. Oh, my God, but he had me try out this chicken that was outstanding. Oh, my God. With some cabbage and, and some... What is that orange stuff called? Yeah. Yams, candy, yams. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so on, uh, but, 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 I'm going to make sure, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, she. I'm going to make sure that I'm not in the wrong place on Wednesdays. Yeah. 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 That I'm in this office like I was, my God, shut in, my God, like I'm accustomed to. And so I receive that. So all I'm trying to say is, my God, guard your life. Yeah. If you know that you are in the wrong place, the Bible said the steps of a good man are firmly ordered. My God, don't quote that scripture. You know your steps is going places they shouldn't be going. Why would you make yourself out of a lie? Why would you sin against yourself? Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. You saying you quoted scriptures, my God. My steps are ordered by the Lord. But you know your steps is going straight to his or her house or wherever. And you know that ain't where you're supposed to be going. You know you're not strong enough to go over that man's house. Why are you going? You know you're not strong enough to, my God, to have no uh, 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 free Wi-Fi on your phone, men. You know you can't drive past the, the former glass house. Come on. Now, y'all know I'm about to clean that up, right, Jack? Because he can now, but he couldn't before. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Amen. Miss Ob, he, yeah, I'll take that one. I sure can tell you. That's power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can now, but he know he used to couldn't. And when he couldn't, he stayed away from it. And God even helped him out because he said, what? You know what? That's because that was his spot. Close the whole store down. God just closed the whole store down. So you ain't got no temptation. <laughs> yeah, so you sure can because there's a bunch of junk in there now. Boy, I know we in the right place. We're talking about winning in public. Winning in public. My God. But losing in private. Being in the wrong place will cause you to lose in private. Point number two. Let's go with it. Let's look at the wrong time. Timing is everything. There's a time to be born. Let me, let me read that. Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastics chapter 3. Let's turn there if you want to. If not, I'm going to get in and read it for us. Ecclesiastics 3. Familiar scripture, but let's get it in our hearing and seeing. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 1, for everything there is a, re a season. Understand it. Even when you watch this, y'all, everybody look at me. Everybody look at Pastor. Remember, I told y'all, don't just read the word, read the word. The, NIV, the New Living Translation, some of y'all may word different, but it's meaning the same thing. It says, for everything, there is a season. Yeah. Even when it comes to your giving, there's a season. Mm -hmm. There's a time in your life where you're sowing, mm -hmm. you're planting. Yes. You're like, God, when, when? Mm -hmm. Just keep planting. Mm -hmm. Because when your season comes, yeah. you can't expect to harvest if you don't have no seed in the ground. Yeah, yeah. See what I say? And then let me let me go a little. Let me let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. There's also a season in relationships, marriages, so forth. My God, my God. When you're sending up timber, ha, when you're sending up prayer, making known your petitions and your supplications, my God. Sooner or later, if you know what the words say, they will they will become a memorial. Yeah. A sweet aroma. Yeah. To heaven. God, when He smelt. Uh oh, that's a prayer that somebody has sent up, and I need to come see. That it's time for me to answer yeah. that prayer. So just to draw strength from what I'm trying to tell you, understand the time and how the inner workings of God. There's a season for things. The seasons, my God. There'll be a season where everything seems like every time you pray, it mature, it, 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 it happens. It, it must have, there'll come a time and, and, and when you pray, it's like ain't everything you praying for ain't nothing happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seasons. Thank God, watch this, that seasons don't last. I mean, stay the same all the time. Yeah. It's never going to just be summer. It's not going to just be winter. It's not going to just be fall. Seasons change. If you keep walking, if you yeah. keep standing, if you keep showing, that's why the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. If you keep believing, that's why you got to pray like your pastor pray. Say, Lord, help my unbelief. Every area where you have unbelief, every area where you are doubting the promises and the principles of God, you need to be saying, God, help my unbelief. Then you got to say, God, give me strength. That's what I was doing for Pastor Ron. My God covered him and Pastor D. I said, Lord, give him strength for the journey. Come on. 
strong because I know what they up against, my God. And so therefore, you in a season where it seems like everything is hard, just say, God, give me strength for the journey, but I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on pressing. I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to back up and I ain't going to shut up. Just give me the strength for the journey and understanding that this season, ah, oh my God, it may be painful huh? and you may find yourself crying all the time and you may find yourself feeling oppressed and depressed, my God, but you got to ah, encourage yourself like David, the same one we're talking about who failed, but he knew how to encourage himself, my God, and you got to encourage yourself, Brian, and tell yourself it's going to be all right. Come on, somebody. This season don't last always. Come on, somebody. Somebody give God a hand. You got to know how to encourage yourself. My God, I love how me and the woman of God bounce off each other. Oh, my God. Very seldomly we catch both of us down at the same time. You and pastors, my God, D can't afford to be. Both of y'all can't be down. Somebody got to stand up and be accountable for her. Oh, my God. Somebody got to say, you know what, baby? You down, but I can't go down with you. I got to, baby, encourage you, my God. We need strength for the journey. We got things to do, my God. If both of us down, that's the blind leading the blind, baby. And so God is so strategic, my God. D might not get it, but Pastor Ron got it. And then it may shift with Pastor Ron got it, and D ain't got it. Come on, somebody. You got to learn how to work like that in your relationship yeah, yeah, with your husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I see you back there. Yes, Lord. Wrong time. The second clue, write this down. The second clue to the progression of a private struggle was David arose in the evening. Progression. That's the word I want you to write down. Verse 2 says, let me get back to it. Give me a minute. We work this constitution. It's good when you hear the pages flipping. 11-2. It says, late one afternoon, or in the evening, depending on how your, your study read, after his midday rest, David got up out of bed. Okay? And so it was the evening time. The word evening time, I tied, indicates the king was sleeping in, sleeping in very late. As the word alludes to, sometime late in the afternoon, what it was saying, that's why I said evening time. So David was sleeping. He went for a long sleep because he was at the wrong place when he should have been off the wall. So he decided, you know what, let me take this leisure because I've been doing good battle. See, that's another thing. Write this down. There's a difference between good battle and bad battle. Mm -hmm. yes. You got to ask yourself, the battles that I'm facing, am I doing good battle? Or am I doing bad battle? Well, how do you know the difference? Because good battle, all oh, you're not going to be drained. Because the Bible says in Zechariah 4 6, it's not by my might nor by my power, but by his spirit. When God is fighting for you, my God, it don't take as much. My God, you know when you're doing bad battle because your axe here will be dull. And it takes more work. <laughs> It takes more uh, strength, my God. Who, my God, but when you let God fight for you, it just seems like they, the seed, the red seed just open up. Yeah. Some battles, you don't even have to get your manicures messed up. Come on, somebody, because God didn't fought the battle for you. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? And so, and so, you know, it was late in the afternoon. See, David was the timing, timing. Let me help you with something, because some of y'all is frustrated to a degree, but let me help you. According to Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. Time to be born, time to die, time to sleep, time to get up the whole nine. My God, read it sometime. My God. And there's timing in God. You got to dance and move to the rhythm. Listen to me. Everybody be quiet. Listen to this. In the kingdom, there is a rhythm. Just like when you was in the club, you danced to the rhythm. In God's kingdom, there's a rhythm, which you and I have to never always remember that the rhythm that's in the world is completely different to the rhythm that's in the kingdom. A lot of Christians is trying to dance, my God, in the kingdom, but they're dancing and moving and walking with the wrong rhythm. That's the world's rhythm. God's rhythm is precise. What rhythm are you walking to? What rhythm are you walking to? Because if you're walking to the world's rhythm, sure, sure, surely you're going to be frustrated, feeling like you ain't making no progress. Everything you try to do, wrong time, the money you invested in stuff didn't happen. You know what I'm trying to say? I wasted time in that relationship, wasted time in that, you wrong rhythm. 
And then we find ourselves, this critical, my God, it's critical when I'm talking about timing because therefore we have allowed our flesh to cause us to get ahead of God. And when something didn't manifest or something didn't happen or did happen, now we frustrated. Now we got a scar that we never had. God said, daughter, I never meant for you to do that. Now you're dealing with a scar of rejection. Now you're dealing with a scar of pain, of physical, of verbal abuse, of financial ruin. And my God, oh, you let somebody, you took a chance, let somebody you, use your credit, and now I look at you. God said, I never told you to do that wrong time because you were so, it sounded so good. You thought, man, I can go for this one. It's going to come out to my good. I'm sure God told me. I fasted, I prayed, I fasted, I prayed. My God, I waited, I waited. I just knew that was God. Be sure. Be sure. Be sure. Truth be told, and I'm not going to even ask for a show of hands, but some of us had some pain, some scars, some disappointments, and some anger because of that right there. Point number two, we have done things out of God's rhythm and timing. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was just uh, talking to my detail man. My guy was cleaning up my car before I came to prayer, and he was asking me some questions, and about a transition that was taking place and they felt like it was time to transition and you know him and his not him not my detail man but a situation they transitioned and uh they got out the boat started walking on water and all of a sudden the spiritual head decided that oh i don't want to do this no more mm -hmm. but it's too late yeah. you got you got your wife your children oh, wow. in the middle of the ocean oh, wow. she following you because I've been together 30 plus years and all of a sudden now you decide that you're going to shift and say, I don't want to do this no more. So now, now, because I was started out for, so now, did God ever even tell you to go? Because you was planted and you was flourishing. Now there's scars, there's wounds, there's pain, there's lack of trust, there's anger, there's frustration. There's a whole lot of stuff that's going on now in the marriage because he made one wrong decision. Because he thought it was time. And he realized it wasn't that easy. Timing. That's a powerful one right there. I'm going to leave that alone. Let's go to number three. Is that helping anybody so far? Come on, y'all talk to me. Is that helping anybody? Yes. Point number three. Let's look at the setting. The setting. Let's set this. Remember, I'm not, I'm not preaching. I'm teaching from the story. I'm teaching the, pulling the principles from the story. Pulling the principles from the story. Watch this. The setting. This point is a deduction from the story. David was married, watch this, to Saul's daughter, King Saul, his spiritual father, the same one that was trying to kill him because David was anointed king. The anointing attracts attacks when Saul recognized that David was next in line when it wasn't his son, Jonathan, it was David. David wasn't Saul's son. David was Saul's armor bearer. David was Saul's son in the spirit. But Saul got jealous of his son. But David, when he first was enlisted into Saul's army, David found favor with King Saul. And Saul gave David his daughter. Now that's a tall order, my God, when you're married to the king's daughter. That's like being married to the pastors or dating the pastor's daughter. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more scrutiny. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And so, therefore, David was married to Saul's daughter, positioning her as the queen of the kingdom. Watch this. However, when David brought his girlfriend into the bedroom, <coughs> David's wife, Michelle, is missing from the story. Because it don't, what, what yeah. The queen might have been out of position. She probably wasn't dusty enough following her husband. The king close enough, she probably got to the point where she didn't value what she had. She too probably got complacent. She too probably got content. She too said, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I've been with him for a long time. I don't need to worry about nothing. I'm good. See, see, where was she at in the story? But the Bible says that she wasn't nowhere around. And so David seen an opportunity to bring an outsider into the bedroom. Watch this. When the wife should have been there to cover. Like mine covered me today. See what I'm trying to say? What am I saying? Wives, don't get too complacent. 
Don't mean the wrong place at the wrong time. Not paying attention to what belongs to you. Don't ever say to yourself, men and women, I would never do that. That'll never happen to me. He loves me too much. She loves me too much. Well, I wonder if Michelle thought that. So she let the king do his thing, you know what I'm trying to say? Or it could have been the other way. Watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> oh, my God. David Men, watch this. See, the setting was so cold. She wasn't nowhere around. David's men was off to war. So David was left to himself. What did I teach y'all? A man, no gender, left to himself is doomed for destruction. <clears throat> left to yourself means when all you got is your mind. When you gauge yourself from your mind. When you tell yourself that I'm okay when you really ain't okay. You, all you're doing is condemning yourself. When you can see everybody else's problems, but you won't look at your own problems. When you got a magnifying glass on him, but you ain't got one on you. Uh, when you point out her faults, but you ain't looking at yours. See what I'm trying to say? That's being left to yourself. And see, therefore, my God, you are judging yourself or comparing yourself by yourself. And so you, they, and you begin to deceive yourself because you begin to think that you're somewhere where you really ain't there. That's why the Bible tells us, Pastor Ron and Pastor D, to have a humble opinion of ourselves. And then it tells us to esteem others more highly than ourselves so that we can keep our pride down. Yes. Yes. So if I esteem him, if I esteem her, if I esteem them more highly than myself, my God, and you have to be able to shovel sheep down and esteem somebody more highly than yourself. That means you got to put somebody else before yourself is self. Come on, man. <laughs> David didn't do that. Go to war. He probably sent his wife on a vacation. Getting the gold chariot and with the with the hundred thousand dollar horses and on 28-inch rims. They got 50-inch rims. And ride off, because I got a game plan. I'm trying to execute and you are interfering with my fleshly game plan. I'm talking about a public success and a private failure. And he has been winning all of his life in public. But David. Started losing in private. Mm, mm, mm. David Meehan was at war and his wife was absent from the palace. Or, like I said, she just didn't care about his indiscretion. Some women... If this is you, I'm not trying to make nobody feel guilty, but I'm trying to expose whatever needs to be exposed. Some of you have turned a blind eye, men and women, to some things that you know that's unbiblical. You have just chose to accept that's just the way it is because I need him to do this or I need her to do that. And so you turn and you allow him to do what he want to do and you know he ain't doing what he's supposed to do. She could have just turned her back on it. She could have been there, Pastor Dean, and just decided to say, you know, it's all good. He the king. He can do what he want to do. I'm good. I got a palace. I don't want for nothing. Come on, somebody. I, I drive what I want to drive. I wear what I want to wear. Come on, somebody. I shop when I want to shop. I eat the best food. I drink the best wine. Come on, somebody. I can have many parties as I want. Rachel, are you listening to me? She probably said, I don't care. Do what you want to do. I'm good. Some of us has been like that. It's all good. Just make sure I got mine. Yeah? Put mine on the... Wood. <laughs> everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. Yeah. Mm. So David was at the wrong place and the wrong time and the wrong setting. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong setting. Let's go to point number four. Let's deal with this mindset, wrong thoughts. There's a way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction or death. In that day, the city of David was constructed on a hill, my God, of Mount Zion, Zion and the king's palace set church, kind of like this pulpit here. This pulpit, really, because in the Old Testament church, the podium or the altar was high. 
And so therefore, when the people would sit in the congregation like y'all said, they would look up. And every time the scrolls was open, they would stand out of reverence to the reading of the scrolls. And so they sat high. The, the pastor sat high, but he looked low on the sheep. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. And so therefore, the king quite often, I studied it and looked at it all in the commentary. The king usually had their house at the highest pinnacle because it was quiet up there. You can't get to me. Come on, somebody. And I can do what I want to do and don't nobody have to bother me. But how many know that that's the structure, but it cost him? Because yeah. he was sitting so high when nobody could see him. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. Mm. Mm. So he, his king, his, the king's power was set above the homes of the people. The roofs were flat, and when David stood on the balcony, he saw a woman bathing herself. Now, I want to bring some context to that. She got her things on, right? And so, therefore, therefore, Bathsheba was bathing in the water because the commentary say, and, and, and I looked at a few of them, and this burrs it out, you know what I'm saying, it was doing her menstrual, menstrual cycle. And so therefore, when you needed to go cleanse, they went into the water and washed. So she wasn't trying to seduce him. She was trying to say, she was just doing what she needed to do because it was time for her to cleanse. And so therefore, David would have been off the wall like he was supposed to. He wouldn't, that would have never happened. You see what I'm trying to say? And so when I looked at that, you know what I'm saying, the commentator said she wasn't actually trying to seduce him. You know what I mean? She was just doing what the scriptural law says she was supposed to do, which is make sure that she was spiritually clean. You see what I'm trying to say? And so David got up and stood up on the balcony and he saw her bathing herself. As he observed her, this point becomes obvious. David's mind began to think the wrong thoughts. I'd have been asleep all day. I got all these victories. Come on, somebody. I'm good. I didn't eat. I'm finna get up. You don't try to say, I walk out on my balcony, you don't try to say, and just chill. And all of a sudden, there she is. Mad in her own business. Watch this. The devil didn't put her there. Let me come over and say this. The devil didn't put her there. What am I trying to say? Take control of your mind and quit blaming everything on the devil. She was doing what all the women did in the scriptures at that time. She was cleaning herself. If David would have been where he was supposed to be at the time he was supposed to be there, then he would have never saw her no way. So what did I just teach y'all? You have to take ownership for yours. And quit blaming somebody else for theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So he began, when he saw her, he began to think the wrong thoughts. He began to think the wrong thoughts, church. He began to think the wrong thoughts. He's seen something. Keep in mind, my God, he has won all the external battles. But now, my God, he's seen something that, 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 that got his attention. Oh, I don't want to get ahead to Sunday, but my God, but, 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 but David had a problem. Uh, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, but David had a problem. Like, we got problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you can be driving the right car. You can have the right clothes. My God, you can have the right office. You can stay in the right home. Oh, my God, you can have it all in the natural, but we got problems. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because we was born after the second item and we was born into sin. Yeah, yeah. So we got a sin nature that has to be dominated, that has to be conquered, and that's why I taught y'all last Sunday that God teaches us to have dominion over the earth, but you got to have old dominion over your flesh, and you do it through crucifying the flesh through the spirit of the living God. Yeah. All you got to do is read Romans 6, 7, and 8. God is telling us how to win this battle. God is telling us how to be victorious and how to keep the flesh under control. You got to do it through the spirit. The Bible says that flesh give way to flesh and spirit give way to spirit. You're trying to fight, my God, a spiritual battle with fleshly weapons and it won't work. That's why you defeat it. That's why you depress. That's why you don't have no victory. That's why you don't trust God. That's why you're just losing because you're fighting the wrong battle with the wrong weapons. Yeah. 
You think your battle is your sister or your brother. You think your battle is your mama or your daddy. You think your battle is your, my God, your boss. Your battle ain't them. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There's principalities, my God. It's spirits that you wage a war against. And if you have made your mind up that you're going off of Christ, you're in a warfare. You got to understand. You're on a battlefield for the Lord. And the devil's trying to kill, steal, and destroy for you. You're fighting spirit. You quit fighting it with flesh. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching. Don't miss Sunday, I promise you. You can't conquer the flesh in the, with the spirit. I mean, the, the spirit with the flesh. You can't overcome hang-ups and habits, my God, from the flesh. You're not going to overcome drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, that stuff, my God, by the flesh. Said, okay, instead of me drinking a fifth, on, on, I'll just drink two beers. You're trying to conquer the flesh with flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ain't going to smoke meth. I'm going to smoke weed. You just substitute. You're trying to conquer yeah. Yeah. flesh with flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Flesh birth flesh. Mm. 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 Well, I quit. I, I know he, my God, I know he ain't good for me. My God, so I won't let him stay past seven. Mm. I won't call him through the week. Mm. Flesh. Flesh. That's why you're defeated because you're trying to win a spiritual war with fleshly thoughts, church. I know it. Thank you, Key. I'm talking to somebody. Give God a hand up in this church. Wrong thoughts. I got a couple more minutes. I want to deal with that before I do this last one. Wrong thoughts. My God. Mm. I got me a new book, and it's uh, by John MacArthur, and it's dealing with learning to think biblically. Learning to think biblically. And he talks about one of the things that gets Christians, that gets Christians is we tend, watch this church, not to put on the helmet of salvation. He stopped right there. Helmet. Every morning, the Lord wake you and I up, strap on. Scripture let this mind be in you that was also in. You can always gauge a person's life and see what battles they are winning or losing if they don't have their helmet on or if they do have their helmet on. Nine out of ten times if a person keep their helmet of salvation on, my God, you will be winning battles. Things that you was losing to, that's because you don't have your helmet on. And so the enemy is always shooting darts, shooting darts. He's on top, sitting high, looking for an opportunity to drop a stone on your head to crush your head. Trying to kill you. See what I'm trying to say? When you got your helmet on, you can wage war. Because the real war... It's right here. So he's talking about how so important it is at this day and time to put your helmet on. And when you put your helmet on, you won't find yourself returning back to the yoke of slavery, not black and white, bondage, yeah. habits, drugs, stuff that God delivered you from. Yeah. You find that stuff back in your life because you didn't took off your helmet. Because mm -hmm. the mind controls the actions. Yeah. And when you find yourself doing things that you know is displeasing to God, it's because you don't have the. So when God wake you up in the morning, if the Lord delay is coming, everybody should get up and be like, put my helmet on. That little music you listen to on 105, they got all that mess going on and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You might want to switch up. You got to switch. Oh, my God, you got to shift. My first lady told me before she went to Atlanta, she said, baby, I feel a shift going on. My God, so you got to shift, 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 shift. The routine that you're accustomed to, my God, and you getting up, my God, my God, going into a warfare, my God, with fleshly armor, you better switch and start putting on some spiritual armor before you get killed. See what I'm trying to say? So you better get up and change the station. You better get up and do something different. I know y'all like to look at, listen to Ricky Smiley and whoever it is, that mess. Some of it is good. I understand you want to know who's dating who and all that. But you in a warfare and you got Ricky Smiley on. on. God is trying to, my God, the devil trying to kill your birds, your kids, everything. And you listen to him, you laughing while the devil is mm, trying to kill you. You better shift. Yeah. yeah. My 
God. Last point, wrong actions. His thoughts led to wrong actions. Ah. Ah, Andre, I just seen what you got on. You got some more hell on. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Wrong actions. This is a cold-blooded progression. The point, this point is that after inquiring, now watch this. We're talking about a man after God's own heart. We're talking about King David. We talking about, don't, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me teach y'all something. Don't you know that our Lord and Savior come from his lineage? Mm -hmm. Jesus comes from the lineage. The lineage. Matthew, read the book of Matthew, the first chapter, when we're talking about the genealogy. Christ come through his bloodline. Yes. Christ come through this bloodline. You know, you know who else Christ come through? A prostitute called Rahab. Yeah. Yeah. So quit turning your nose up on people that don't look yeah. like you, talk like come you. On, come on. Because our Lord and Savior come from a man that committed adultery and murder, yeah. you finna find out. Yeah. And my God, his bloodline and your bloodline from a prostitute. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all didn't even know that, did y'all? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. Good, <laughs> this is the point after inquiring about who she was and finding out she was another man's wife. He still said, Bring her to my bedroom. He asked, who is that, baby? He asked. David said, who is that? They said, that's Uriah's wife. So he had a warning right there. Warning before destruction. Yeah. 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 We talking about a man after God's own heart. Sister Jack, we talking about the king, my God. We talking about King David, the royal bloodline. Ooh, I can't wait to Sunday. I wish God let it be tomorrow. I promise you, you don't want to miss Sunday. Come with an expectation. I need you to because I got something on my soul. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it's, this is the type of stuff that gets you ready for the summer. Don't be at the wrong place. Don't be at the wrong. Don't do the wrong thing at the wrong time. See, you know what I'm trying to say? Don't start putting on the wrong clothes. Come on, somebody. Try to, yeah, 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 yeah. I can go there. Don't get it started. Mm -hmm. And so he said, bring her to my bedroom. The fivefold downward path from life the spiritual death took place when he said, when he looked at her and said, who is she? And then bring her. That's when spiritual death started to take place in David's life. It started before he actually said, bring her. It started in this thought. Some of us is dying right here before the physical or even the spiritual, more so spiritual death, take place. You backslide in your mind before you ever backslide in your actions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The things that you have conquered, when you let the enemies back in your life, you let them in your mind before you let them in your life. Right. See what I'm trying to say? Things that you, have, drawn, that you have, have, have driven out of your life, when God has delivered you from something, when God has breaking, broke you from something, God has removed you from certain places, my God, or whatever it is, if it ends up back in your life, it's stored in your mind before you actually open up the door and let it back in. Yeah. Let me say it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Helmet of salvation on. Okay? My God. And so from this, 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 this five-fold downward path started the spiritual, spiritual death. He was in the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong setting, and the wrong thought, which all led to wrong action. Watch this. David's five-fold pattern was declined, was for, for declining, revealed that it was not certain. This pattern Reveals that it was not sudden. What I mean is, he just didn't wake up and say, man, I'm finna commit adultery. Right, right. This is something. Oh, my God, thank you. Oh, my God, see, the enemy start yeah. jabbing at you, planting seeds, watering. Just like the Bible said, God plant one water, one, one plant, one water, and God get increased. Well, the enemy got people that plant water so he can get increased too. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? But this wasn't a sudden decision. This wasn't a sudden decision. Remember, rhythm. He was out of rhythm. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong setting. He was completely out of rhythm. But see, this is deliberately because he said, y'all go off the war. Unaccountable for his wife. 
his kids was off the war and so forth, and he was left to himself. So this was <laughs> deliberately planned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen suddenly. What am I trying to say? Some of the things that the python, when a python bites you, it don't kill you. A python bites you, paralyzes you, and then it starts rapping. Watch me, y'all. Watch me. Some of us has been bitten, and this is what he's doing. And the more he go around you, once he get a good grip, once the flesh is alive, once you stop praying, once you start reconnecting with the wrong people, once you start going to the wrong places, once you start doing the wrong thing, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And the ultimate goal of Satan or the python is to suffocate you till you die. Yeah. And so that's possible that you could be in church, in discipleship one, in discipleship two, in discipleship three, at six o'clock prayer, sometime going in the dark, come on somebody, and yet, my God, it's getting stronger and stronger because even though you're in discipleship one, though you're in discipleship two, though you're at six o'clock prayer, though you come to a man's encounter, though you come to a woman's encounter, you keep flirting with the devil. See what I'm trying to say? So long as you're doing all the external church activity, and it's not affecting you internal, then the python is suffocating you. And before you know it, you will be picked off. And guess what? And I'm through. Guess what? Usually, when a person transitioned up out of going off of Christ church, it wasn't usually suddenly. Sometime it may be, Pastor Ron, but most of it was deliberately thought out. Because, now I'm going to use Marquita like we learned, because the pain was so strong when she tried to run from the pain. But her P-12 leader ran out there and got her. Like y'all know, God wouldn't let her get away. She was trying to run from the transformation. Thank God for connection. Yes, yes. And so when a person has transitioned from the church, church setting like this, seriously, y'all, seriously, it was deliberately thought out. And so now all they need is one excuse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like David did, to execute the plan in totality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, I know that speaks to a lot of our lives. I just need one excuse. Pastor didn't speak. Pastor too hard. I, they, they didn't do this. Or they told me I was going to. They made a problem. Whatever. One excuse, Pastor. Is all they need for the plan that oh, they've been, my God, Jesus. orchestrating in their mind mm. to be fully executed and carried out. Mm, mm, mm. And I said that in relation to church, but that's in relation to life. Okay? Mm. David's five-fold pattern, my God, decline revealed that it was not such overwhelming. It wasn't a sudden, suddenly overwhelming urge that could not be resisted. But it was well orchestrated for his personal pleasure. In my closing, for many years, and this is true, I was puzzled. And how a man after God's own heart, my God, and a godly king would allow himself to fall. It's my question. It's my closing. So low and be trapped in. Let me say that again. Trapped in adultery because also David tried to cover up. And he had Uriah killed, which was Bathsheba's husband. See what I said? Because she said, okay, y'all know she got that. That's that Mary J. Blige knock. This baby is yours. And so David said, my God, I got to come up with a plan. I'm the king. I'm married. My God, I got a few wives. You know what I'm At that time, it was okay. My God. Oh, my God. And so, <laughs> oh, my God. And so, therefore, I got to come up with a plan to protect my, my, my God, my, my, my status quo, my reputation. How can they find out, my God, that I have done something like this? And my God, so he took it to an extreme. And he told Joab, one of his servants in the army, to put him on the front line in the fiercest part of the battle and let him be killed. So not only did he commit adultery, baby, he conspired and he committed murder. We talking about the man after God's own heart. Please don't miss Sunday. See what I'm trying to say? So let's stand on our feet.